Hello everybody, this is Neil Feiler. I'm here with a weekly astrological message for the week between the 5th and the 12th of September 2020. And here I talk about the celestial soup. We are all swimming in all zodiac signs. First of all, thank you for joining. And secondly, I just want to remind you that I have a 30% off special Corona um, COVID-19 discount for my community. So if you want to have a discounted session with me or study astrology and have a discounted course or private lesson, this is the time to contact us. So let's talk about what this week is bringing. First of all, uh, Mars, planet of action and energy and vitality, is going into retrograde in its ruling sign of Aries. This is a especially strong retrograde and a retrograde of Mars is not what we have thought it to be. Scientific astrological research has found out that within a Mars retrograde we have less impulsivity and we tend to internalize our angers. There is more space for logical thought Nevertheless, the internalization of our angers and needs is not necessarily a good thing. So I would like you, within this retrograde period that is going to start exactly on um, Tuesday, is it? No, it's uh, Thursday the 10th, Eastern European time. And it's going to end in November, but the shadow of the retrograde, the point that Mars actually started retrograding in, the 28th degree, of Aries is going to be reached only in the beginning of January. So from now on to January, this is a time that we could, well, at least until November, we could work to reflect how it is that our needs, wants, actions, impulses, desires act out in our lives. We could actually reflect that better, but I would like you to still verbalize it, to put it out there, to act upon it, but make it in a way that puts in more logic and a better viewpoint of the strategic effect of things. This is a particularly sensitive time because frustration can grow larger as we internalize our needs and angers. And if that happens, then we could see a lashing out by the end of this retrograde when Mars steps in to a direct motion, um, equivalent to a, a, a stone being thrown from a catapult, as Maurice Fernandez used to say, or still says, thank God, thank Goddess. So we have to watch our own anger and our own needs at this time and still act upon them. Uh, that's one thing happening this week. We have a big, giant, biggest Earth uh, trine, grand trine, that we could have in the sky with the two luminaries and Jupiter joining into that trine that's going to help us to establish things and to become more fruitful and to actually be harness what we believe in, what we see as the truth and use it as a mobilizing power to recreate our destiny and our futures and our sense of security and well-being. And that's a wonderful thing. So let's go down to the weekdays and see how this all comes to pass. Saturday the 5th, and I, run, I want to remind you, if you're in Australia, in the Pacific, take it a day ahead. If you are in New York, uh, or Los Angeles, take it a day before, about 10 hours before, about 10 hours ahead if you are in the South Pacific. Um, Saturday the 5th, we can see Mercury, it's an intense day. Mercury steps in to the sign of Libra, helping us for the next three weeks or so to become more diplomatic, to see things from another person's viewpoint and actually have a more anthropological and holistic viewpoint about things, but it can tend to cause our verbalization of things and our communication to go to extremes to prove a point. Um, or to, as I said, internalize what it is we think of and believe in and not actually spell it out. 
both are possibilities and both are not very good. Um, Sunday the 6th is still an intense day, a day to watch our impulsivity as the moon is conjunct Mars and squaring Saturn but and also squaring Venus later that day implying that this is also a sensitive day with relationships and with income and uh, self-value and self-esteem but Mer Venus is stepping into the sign of Leo for the next month and this spells out good things for our enjoyment of being in a body, having five senses, enjoying relationships and love and romance, and just squeezing the zest out of life. And isn't that a blessed thing? Monday the 7th, we're having this grand Earth trine in the sky with Jupiter, the Sun, and the Moon. Really a wonderful energy. The Moon is also conjunct Uranus, so it brings this buzz of electric energy that can actually help us step from point A to point B in our life without being afraid and embracing the new. Tuesday the 8th, same energy in the sky, a lot of spirituality as well and creativity and a need for the understanding of the greatness and importance of our community and our support system and the clan we are part of, the family we are part of, in the grander scheme of things, but also our inner home, how we treat ourselves and how we seek power and do we seek it outwardly, that acknowledgement, or do we seek it inwardly? And of course the answer on that day should be inwardly, even though our community, our family, our belonging to a group and to a clan is so important. Nevertheless, strength draws from within. Wednesday the 9th, Sun trines Jupiter exactly. This is a very expansive and optimistic kind of uh, uh, transit. We have to watch ourselves not to be untactful or too grandiose in our schemes, um, not to be too direct or to actually vanguard and, and, and invade other people's uh, um, space and, and territory without even being aware innocently. We have to uh, understand that this is a time that we could jump too high too soon and we have to be very um, very professional about things and full of humility. Um, it is a good day Wednesday the night for anything concerning money and relationships and communications. On Thursday the 10th, we have a sensitive day. This is the day that Mars actually starts its retrograde. The Sun is squaring the Moon. The Moon is squaring Neptune. And Mercury is opposing Chiron. So really watch how our own hurt places, our own places of insecurity, um, make sure that they don't execute any, um, you know, behavioral patterns that stem out of that insecurity in our communications and navigation through the world how we answer the challenges that are brought up definitely this is a day to think about what it is that hurt us what it is that needs our tending and healing and understand it better and Friday the 11th is a lethargic day um, from afternoon onwards. Before that there is a lot of energy. Um, so morning time, a lot of energy, great for having things done with the family or people you feel close to or affinity to, that clan. But from afternoon onwards there's a much more lethargic, forgetful, kind of fading out atmosphere, great for watching movies on the sofa, um, great for just having a low-key time with friends or family or being out in nature or painting or doing music or anything spiritual. Not good for doing calculations or anything Virgo-like uh, and, and analyzing anything um, or making big decisions. Saturday the 12th it is an interesting day. It's a great day to be with family and it's a great day to be in a comforting environment because the moon is square in Chiron and is a sensitive day. And it's a great day to work on healing, on healing on the emotional level. However, on Saturday the 13th, the moon and Venus are trining Chiron. 
and this is a good time to work on healing, this is a great time to tend to things that have been uh, neglectful at the past, the recent past, or have suffered at the recent past, like our relationships, like love and satisfaction, like self-esteem, like money and income, and value in our life. And that's a very positive influence. And Jupiter also goes direct, and we could expect our truth, how we see the truth, our belief systems to act as a greater power in manipulating and actually recreating the future that we all believe in. And may we all believe in a bright future. This is certainly an optimistic uh, thing that Jupiter works direct after a few months. And But we have to expect also that people are going to be more sure of whatever it is they believe in. And not all of us believe in the right things. And very simply put, there are two groups of people in this world, in every nation, every religion, most of the times in every family, and I've said it before, I will say it again. One group is a group that understands that we were born butt naked babies on a round world, as my father used to say. That nobody has a dominion over the truth, and this is a live and let live world. We should all get along together. Nobody has a dominion over land or animals or things like that as well, but that's a bit more progressive. And if you want to get more progressive than that, then personal possessions, as Lenin once sang. And the other group is a group that is sure that their truth is the only truth, and everybody should abide by their truth. And we can find these radicals, <coughs> and rad being radical is not a bad thing, as Martin Luther King used to say. It's just, what kind of radical are you going to be? <laughs> but these kinds of radicals that see their truth as the only truth, and that everybody should abide by their truth, could be on every side of the fence. Most of the time we find them on the religious extremist side in religion. But they could be in the far left as well. They could be, you know, in, in, in the atheist, communist kind of sector as well. They don't need any divine power to help them become that. <laughs> and they could be even in, in my home turf of ecological warriors and activists that don't see how different ways of life are allowed, you know, and seeing, you know, the, the, the great need of taking care of this extinction and this global warming process as the primary thing we need to align with. So any kind of extreme, extremism needs to be very checked and balanced as dichotomous as it sounds. But that's the only way to be a good extremist. And I think we can sum up this kind of extremism in another saying by Martin Luther King. Even if the world would end in day, I would still plant my apple tree. So go and plant your apples. And try to like them apples too. Because it's all about self-love and self-hatred and free love and free hatred right now. This is the money time. And that free love and or free hatred given to the world starts with you. How much free love or free hatred are you giving yourselves? And I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you for watching, commenting, and sharing these. May we all, this is Nia Fyler, of course, may we all live long and prosper. Amen.